I wanted to bring today's episode to the podcast, digging into EMF exposure, particularly for male factor infertility, for sperm count, motility, DNA fragmentation, for testosterone levels, really for the men in your life to talk about how EMF is impacting their sperm and um, really drilling down into what the, the studies are telling us and simple things we can do to protect ourselves. This is for you and your partner to listen to again. Definitely go back and listen to the other episode where we did about EMFs, how to protect your fertility from EMF exposure. Today's so we're just digging in a little more on the male fertility side. So excited for you to listen to this episode. Hey there, thanks so much for listening to the Get Pregnant Naturally podcast. And I've got a favor to ask you if you are enjoying learning about the functional approach to fertility, consider going to iTunes and rating and reviewing the podcast. This is how how it helps the show reach more people that are struggling with infertility, knowing that there's another approach that really can get to the bottom of why it's not working in the first place. So all you need to do is if you're on the app or the desktop, just go in and consider leaving a five-star rating and leave a review. And there is step-by-step -step instructions in the show notes showing you exactly how to do that. So if you can just take a few minutes, just take a few minutes right now, you can pause this, this recording, come back leave the review. It would really mean the world to me and help others that are on the fertility journey as well. Take care. Hey there. I regularly speak with five to 10 couples per week who are struggling to have their baby. And although we want to help everyone, we only have two spots available per month to work with us. So the Supercharger Fertility Discovery Call is for action takers really people who are ready to move forward so they can finally have their baby. And if you're not ready and you wait, the risk is you'll need to wait two to three months for a spot to open up. So if you're seriously considering working with us, go to fabfertile, F-A-B-fertile.com and click on book a free call. Then you'll be all booked in and ready to spend 30 minutes to give you the action plan to getting pregnant naturally. That's fabfertile, F-A-B-fertile.com and click on book a free call. One theme that keeps coming up with the couples in our fab fertile couples coaching program is sleep. Whether it's insomnia, having a hard time falling asleep, waking up at night or feeling tired when we wake up, sleep is critical for fertility and hormones. And that's why I'm so excited to have Blue Blocks as our podcast sponsor. So we're exposed to blue and green light from our phones, our tablets, our computers, indoor lights, and more. And this exposure impacts our melatonin production. And melatonin is essential for both female and male fertility. It helps determine the frequency and duration of our cycle and impact packs sperm. There's lots of blue light blocking glasses on the market, but the ones from Blue Blocks, they've actually compared other popular brands and Blue Blocks block 100% of blue and green light while other brands fall short. So I have their sleep glasses. They have red lenses and the ones I have are a little translucent uh, frame and they're so stylish and really cool. And so they eliminate 100% of the blue and green light in the 400 nanometer to 550 nanometer range. So this is the exact range that has been shown in clinical studies to disrupt melatonin and negatively impact your sleep. So all you do is wear your sleep glasses after sunset until it's time for bed and you'll notice improved sleep after just one use. And it's also cool to use when you're flying for managing jet lag. So I got to say I was a little skeptical about the noticing uh, improvement after one use, but literally I, did, I use these glasses and my sleep is actually already pretty good. I use them for one day and I have to say after one day, I had the best sleep of my life. I just felt so rested. So these glasses, they ship free and they're tracked for all orders anywhere in the world. And also they have all their frames come in prescription, non-prescription and reading glasses. Plus you can send in your frames and they'll add the blue light blocking and green light blocking lenses to your frame. So this is an easy hack that you can add to your fertility toolkit. All you do is go to blueblocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com. Use the coupon code get pregnant podcast at checkout and receive a 15% discount. That's blue blocks, B L U B L O X.com and use the coupon code get pregnant podcast to receive your 15% discount. I didn't need to go to donor eggs. Obviously mm -hmm. I don't regret it. I have beautiful children. I could have done things differently restored. I was still cycling back in my, in my twenties. I could have looked at my health, the environmental toxins, the stress I was under. Many, many women are being told their eggs are too old. That's often merely an assumption that's not based on actual evidence. The reason being that there is no direct test of egg quality. You can't test egg quality. 
It's the man who's got a food sensitivity or he has a zinc deficiency. Like there can be a root cause to these symptoms that are, you know, quote unquote, period problems that the doctor will pass you a pill without any question of why. And some part of you knows that if you can reframe your journey from not one of struggle, or if it is struggle, learn how to embrace the struggle. Learn how to embrace it. Most conditions in the child occur during the nine months of development. It's the, the genetic switches are turned on or turned off and they're pre-programmed. So you are in such a powerful, amazing position to do amazing things for your kids. You know, why is IVF the first step? Because we believe it should be the last step. Welcome to Get Pregnant Naturally, where functional medicine and natural fertility solutions will help you get pregnant and have your baby. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Clark, the founder of Fab Fertile and your host. I believe the functional approach is the first step for anyone struggling with infertility, and my aim is to help you get pregnant naturally. Today, I'm welcoming Arthur Menard de Calang to the podcast, and we're digging into electromagnetic frequency or EMF radiation and how this can impact male fertility. Arthur is the co-founder and CEO of LAMS. LAMS is pioneering personal protection in everyday garments with their proprietary radiation-proof technology. As a Forbes 30 under 30 serial entrepreneur and innovator, Arthur's work has been appraised by countless media and health professionals. And when he is not working, Arthur is an active world traveler and avid sports practitioner. Thanks so much for listening. I'm so thankful that you're here. Make sure you hit subscribe. And if you know someone else who's on the fertility journey, please share this podcast with them. Hey, Arthur, excited to have you on the podcast. Hi, Sarah. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Great. If you could share your journey and really how you came to do this work. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. So I have a background in engineering huh. and a mind that loves to solve problems. And so I was... Um, sitting at dinner with friends one day and we all started a discussion around emf and the fact that it's been years that we hear about the fact that emfs are dangerous for our health uh, whether for cancer or fertility reasons but that all of us here around the table had their cell phones in the pocket most of the most of the day the trend that we were that we were following was rather to be exposed to more and more of those EMF, uh, of those EMF radiation rather than uh, on the decline for sure. And so that same evening, that's when I started digging into, okay, what is the actual impact of EMFs on my body? And the first thing that I came across was the World Health Organization website and the fact that cell phone radiation were categorized as a class 2b human carcinogen which is the same as car exhaust fumes and for me that was really my haha moment because i'm not willing to be in a room right now with a car running uh, but i'm doing this effectively with emf uh, i'm doing this call on wi-fi i've got my cell phone close to me i do have a wearable device um, for tracking my fitness level and so on and so forth and so that evening is when i probably got into the field as you said and uh, decided to take action. Um, I started looking at whether there were solutions out there and nothing was satisfactory. And so we set out to create a technology that could be worn directly and that would be blocking 99.9%. But yeah, so we, uh, we set out to create technology that we could wear and that would be blocking, shielding our body from, um, from this harmful effect from EMF radiation. Yeah, so we've had another podcast episode for definitely go check out the podcast episode where we talk about how to protect your fertility from EMF. Today, we're going to be digging more into to male fertility, but this just give us um, an overview again of what EMF radiation is and why we need to be concerned about it for fertility. Yeah, absolutely. So EMF radiation are electromagnetic frequencies. And this is a mouthful, but they're probably more well known as wireless radiation. So effectively, these are radiation that are emitted by your cell phone, by cell towers, by your Wi-Fi router, 
by your computer, if it's connected to the Wi-Fi, by any connected devices, effectively that is speaking with the internet. So a few other examples include your home automation devices, whether it is smart light bulb, Alexa, Google Home, etc. Uh, your car, most likely as well and your Bluetooth connected headsets, for instance. So why do our devices emit uh, EMF? Uh, it's because that's the preferred channel for communicating. Um, so that's how your cell phone is connected to a cell power. Uh, that's how your computer is connected to the internet. Uh, and that's effectively how you're getting all access to internet and to voice and messages and so on and so forth. So EMFs are essentially powering our communication system today. Yeah, and like you were saying, when you're sitting around the table there, when everyone's like, oh, wait a minute, I got this phone in my in my front, my, my pocket, in my pants. So how is that impacting male fertility? You've got a number of studies on your on your site there talking about um, reproductive health. Yeah, just because, uh, uh, just before I, I jump into this, um, one last thing that is probably interesting to underline is how our exposure has been evolving uh, in the recent years yeah. because of this table <laughs> example that you were giving. So back in the 90s, uh, which is when the safety measures uh, were taken against EMF, actually, the first the safety limits were established, we had those brick cell phones that we would use maybe one hour a week, if you're lucky. <laughs> and then um, Wi-Fi came out and started to be a thing in the mid 2000s uh, similarly with cell phone, then we got into smartphones, which are with us all the time, uh, then connected devices, fitness trackers, um, 4G, 5G that is coming out, and that's going to create 50 times more antennas. Overall, what's interesting to note is that our exposure to wireless radiation has been increased by a quintillion time, that's a 1 and 15 zeros behind yeah. in the recent years. So the magnitude of this is completely new to humankind and the amount of exposure that we're that we have today is completely unprecedented. So with that said, that's a good premise for your question, which is what impact does it have exactly? The real answer is that we actually don't know what the long-term effect mm -hmm. is because we have no studies <laughs> as to what what this kind of exposure long term can lead to, however, uh, we do have data on what impact it can have on the short term, and uh, especially what biological and molecular mechanisms are being activated by this exposure to EMS. And then the long term is a little bit more blurry. But on the short term, what's happening when you're exposed to EMF radiation is that you have an activation of your fight and flight immune system. Uh, so cell phone radiation or EMFs are polarized waves uh, and so are your cells membranes. And so when this wave gets in contact with the cell membrane, um, it's being taken as, by the cell as an external aggression, and it will trigger an immune response, which is the same as you would uh, usually if you're sick, if you have virus, um, uh, if you have a cut, uh, that kind of thing. So this immune response will create what's called oxidative stress. The best example of oxidative stress is if you cut an apple in two and just let it sit on the counter, you will find that the, the apple becomes brown on the inside. Uh, that's the result of oxidative stress, and that's essentially a phenomena that is happening in your body when you're exposed to um, EMF radiation, not the, not the becoming brown parts, the, <laughs> the uh, oxidative stress. This amount of oxidative stress is what can cause the body uh, to have a multitude of problems. It's um, an underlying factor for a lot of today's health issues, um, including, but not limited to, cancer risks, um, cardiovascular diseases, neurological, neurological disorders, and um, fertility issues as well. On the fertility side, the studies that have been done so far have been done in, as, as far as I know, uh, in two main ways. The first one is in vitro, meaning we take for male fertility, we'll take male sperm, separate it into two, two uh, different tubes, expose one of them to um, EMF radiation and uh, compare the sperm quality to the other one that is um, that, that has not been exposed. And the second one was uh, epidemiology 
biological studies where we would measure the amount uh, the, the the fertility factors of men and compare the levels of people who are carrying the cell phones in, in their pockets very often, say four hours plus a day, to people who are not. And um, and so one of the most well-known studies that have been done on the subject um, is the Cleveland Clinic study, where they studied a little bit more than a thousand men, and they found out that uh, for a man keeping his cell phone in his pocket more than four hours per day, his sperm count uh, would be divided by two, roughly, compared to someone who was not carrying his cell phone in his pocket. And the other factors, such as sperm motility, sperm quality altogether, so uh, that includes um, lifespan, um, that includes correct morphology, etc., were also... Uh, so the percentage of sperm with correct morphology, with correct lifespan, with correct um, motility, etc., were uh, usually studied 50% lower than uh, a man who would not carry cell phone in his pocket. Yeah, like th- th- these these things are shocking, right? And there's also another study um, that the the Hebrew University and Mount Sinai Medical School. You, you want to talk about that one? But where they did a study from 1973 to 2011, and the sperm counts per milliliter of semen declined more than 50%. So over the f- last 40 years, it's just, you know, a huge decline in, in sperm health. And, and also, it used to be that um, it was 60% male factor infertility and, sorry, 60% female factor infertility, 40% male, and now it's more 50-50. Yeah, um, and what's what's been very uh, very scary when looking at male fertility is the decline that we've had over the past few years, as you were saying. Uh, roughly, male fertility has been declining one point five to two percent per year, and that's been going on for years now. So, EMF are most certainly one of the factors impacting this. It probably is not the only one. Um, you also have pollution um, or exposure to. Um, to, to a, a variety of uh, other factors, but uh, EMF radiation is, is most likely one of them. Yeah, it's like EMFs or alcohol, which will decrease sperm count. Marijuana will de- decrease sperm count. Smoking, diet. We um, did an episode with Dr. Tom O'Brien, who's a um, an expert on gluten. So food sensitivities, gut infections, people with like obesity. So getting into that normal BMI, blood sugar imbalance, uh, a lot of eating a lot of soy products. So those phytoestrogens. Um, and also pesticides too, switching to that organic diet and and stress. But EMFs are, to me, EMFs are just an, an easy one that, and that's why I wanted to really focus on this again today to be able to to, to minimize your risk. I really love your product too that you that you have there to that, that we can we can talk a little bit about later. But anything else as far as studies? I think you were talking about yeah, you talked about the cell phones um, for four hours a day. Um, what about Wi-Fi too? Yeah, I mean, Wi-Fi is essentially the same type of radiation as your cell phone. It's actually, uh, for the most part, very similar frequencies, so it has the same impact on your body, and so are and and, and so do most of your connected devices as well. Um, the challenge and the, the that this field I've seen in in the past uh, years has been to create studies where you identify one, uh, where you single out one single factor. In vivo, which is very hard to do in the case of, um, of wireless radiation in particular, uh, and so the wireless industry has been hammering down um, the scientists who've been studying this. There is a great, great uh, article that uh, listeners can can find, uh, written, published by The Guardian. I think the title is The Truth About uh, Cell Phone Radiation and Cancer, something like this. Mm-hmm. And uh, it highlights the strategies that have been taken by uh, the wireless industry for the past few years to kind of try and get this uh, issue swept under the rug, if you will, uh, even though they've been uh, warned about 25 years ago about the dangers of cell phone radiation, whether from the cancer side or from the fertility side. So I find it amazing that people like you are thinking about it and sharing this because if I hadn't been lucky on my end and uh, ended up researching this this one evening after dinner, uh, I would probably be, I probably have no idea of how bad wireless radiation can have an impact on our health. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then what about um, testosterone levels as well? 
Yeah, so that's part of the things that have been studied as well, and that seem to show a very strong decline in testosterone when being exposed to wireless radiation. We actually are working with um, a few athletes and coaches uh, who are recommending our products to their athletes because of this specific reason. So we have people from the New York Knits, from the New York Giants, uh, to put a couple of teams from from New York, but who are wearing our products because they do see a difference in their uh, performance levels when wearing the product versus not. So essentially when being exposed or on, or not exposed. And what about the, the new rollout of 5G? What's your take on all that? <laughs> uh, it's a question that I get all the time right now, which I find very interesting. I'm actually all for 5G. It's an amazing innovation that is going to power a lot of uh, tomorrow's world, uh, especially self-driving cars, for instance, are one of the one of the things that are going to be powered on 5G. There is a lot more to it, um, so I think it's a very, very exciting technological development. Now, with it comes the other side of the uh, of 5G, which is the fact that it's about it's way more powerful waves than what we're currently exposed to with 4G or with 3G. It's a uh, short waves uh, that are very powerful and so we're going to need about 50 times the amount of antennas that we currently have in order to get 5g coverage meaning that we're going to see an, a 5g antenna essentially every every corner or every block uh, roughly and that means that we're going to be subject to a lot more uh, radiation in the next few years than we even are, that we even are today the silver lining in this is that uh, there are solutions now, and that's kind of why we've been working hard at it uh, in order to keep on living a modern life without adverse effect associated with it. But um, from a technological perspective, 5G is going to be absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and, and what about for so protecting? What what are some strategies that we can do to protect ourselves from EMFs? Yeah, so I think... Um, it, I, as for, I mean, this is kind of my approach to life. So I don't know if uh, I, if everyone will, will share it, but um, uh, there are some very simple steps that you can take without going uh, overboard uh, in order to protect yourself from 5G, and uh, you'll be living your life very regularly, uh, very, very normally without changing anything. The first step would be when you're taking a, self, uh, a, a phone call, use uh, the speaker mode or use a corded device uh, to instead of, of putting your cell phone next to your brain. Uh, that would be number one. Number two, when you get home or at the office, uh, put your cell phone on a table uh, instead of keeping it in your, cell, in your pocket all the time. Uh, number three would be move your router in your home to a place where it's not next to your bed or next to a place that you would be spending a lot of time in. So say your couch or... Uh, your dining table, wherever it is that you spend a lot of time and rather place it at a place where it's farther away from you. If you want to take an extra step, uh, you can buy a, a programming plug and make sure that your Wi-Fi is automatically turned off uh, at night uh, between the hours that you're usually sleeping at uh, so that you reduce your amount of exposure to. And the last step, obviously, would be to be wearing lamps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we effectively reduce 99.9% uh, of your exposure um, or while it's not changing anything um, and just by switching out your garments essentially yeah so let's talk about your um your lambs underwear and you have other you have toques as well and you also got a female um line that's coming out in the next month or so we're recording this uh right now in the middle of may let's talk about the technology behind that and and how it actually protects us uh -huh. you put a, a lot of pressure for me to be on time on the female uh lunch now <laughs> <laughs> uh, the date is not may it's currently july <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so the technology, uh, it's very interesting. It actually originally comes from um, an idea that we got from NASA spacesuits. So an astronaut going into space is exposed to a lot of wired, a lot of radiation, mainly coming from the sun, but it's actually the same type of uh, radiation as you would get from 
uh, your cell phone, not exactly, not the same frequency, but uh, um, in effect, a an astronaut is exposed to about, um, I think it's 1,500 chest rays uh, in, during a six-month journey. So the spacesuits have an inbuilt layer um, that protects them from wireless radiation. And so we took the same approach uh, and we essentially tried to recreate the same physical properties as the spacesuits have, um, except that we did this with a fabric that just as comfortable, or actually in our case, even more comfortable than cotton or any other fabric that we usually wear. So the way it works, um, and I, I promise I, I won't geek out too long, uh, is uh, that we, we use a physical principle, which is called electromagnetic shielding. Um, wireless radiation cannot penetrate a mesh of silver or conductive fibers if the, the size of the holes um, of this mesh is smaller than the web radiation wavelength. That's mouthful, but just try to picture a human trying to go through a fence if the holes of the fence are smaller than the size of the, the head. Uh, that's virtually impossible. And that's the same uh, principle that we're using, but this uh, principle is a couple of caveats. The main one is that if you want this electromagnetic shield to be efficient, um, it needs to be a fully closed um, Area. So um, it needs to be an enclosure uh, that is that is completely closed. Um, you have a very good example of this technology at work in your microwave. Uh, so if you were to look at the door of your microwave, you'll see that there is a, an aluminum grid in it. And this grid is actually in all the sides of your microwave and allow the wireless radiation of your microwave, which are actually the same type of radiation as your cell phone or your Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. um, just blasted at a much at a much higher rate at your food. Um, and so that's this technology at work. And so uh, we've created a fabric that is made of silver fibers that are weaved in uh, such a way that they block 99.9% .9 of all cell phone, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 3G, 4G, and 5G radiation uh, from reaching your body. And then this fabric is integrated at 360 degrees all around our products in order to shield the body. Uh, so we have t-shirts, beanies, and underwear right now. And the female versions are coming out very soon, as you said. And, uh, and yeah, and so this... Um, this fully closed factor is super, super important if you want to create this electromagnetic shield effect or also known as a Faraday cage. What about with the, the fabric breathing? So you're not feeling all sweaty? Like how does that work? So um, our fabric actually has uh, pretty cool properties aside from the fact that it blocks uh, cell phone and Wi-Fi radiation. The first one is antibacterial. Um, so if you are sweating, silver will actually naturally have a, a bacteria impact and, uh, and suppress the smell that would be associated with uh, sweat usually. Um, and the second one is that we worked a ton on the fabric for it to be super breathable and heat diffusing as well. So we actually avoid uh, the formation of hot spots as you would in a regular fabric, uh, say under the armpits or in areas which are a bit hotter than others and the, the heat gets diffused more effectively with this fabric than with uh, regular cotton or, or whatever you'd be wearing usually. It's actually very, very comfortable to wear. <laughs> And you said you've um, some athletes are wearing it. Like, what is what are your feedback? Like, what what are you hearing? The feedback has been overall overwhelmingly good. Uh, what's been super awesome is to see how well the communities have received the product altogether. We get uh, emails every day from people thanking us from coming up with this uh, type of product, which is which is amazing. And but one thing that I think is very important is that. Uh, the reason why we don't have a female line right now is not because we're sexist. Uh, it's because we take a great care into creating amazing products from a fit and a design perspective as well. Not to say that we have a 100% uh, satisfaction rate when it comes to the fit. Some people have body types that are slightly different from what, uh, what, what fits currently our, our type of customer. But um, altogether, we've worked very, very hard on the products so that uh, when you wear them, you're actually wearing your best underwear, your best t-shirt or your best beanie 
and not just uh, wearing it for the protection aspect. And so uh, I think this has been very instrumental in getting people really on board with uh, the fact of w- with wearing our products uh, on a daily basis. Yeah, because you can get the cell phone protector and you can get all the other, like I have a laptop um, protector and then they have blankets and things like that. But yeah, actually wearing this all the time then you're you're minimizing your 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 risk and so yeah so you're eliminating your well not eliminating it completely because you say it's 99.9 but you're shielding yourself uh yeah i mean you you you'll never find uh something that is 100 percent effective it just doesn't exist from a physical perspective <laughs> it's completely <laughs> impossible um except if you're living in a uh, maybe if you're living in a bunker that doesn't have a door, <laughs> but aside from this, it's completely impossible to get a hundred percent. So no solution out there is able to provide a hundred percent protection. And short of getting rid of all sources of wireless radiation, which means effectively going living in, in the mountain or <laughs> or in the forest, this is the best alternative for being protected. Uh, all the time without having to change anything. Is there a success story or anything you'd like to share? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know about success story, uh, but we've had uh, a couple of very interesting things going on in the companies. One of our employees, and bear in mind, this is one isolated person that doesn't mean that it's uh, it can be replicated to, to others, but one of our employees, when joining the company, did a sperm count test, joined the company afterwards, and started wearing lamps on a daily basis and went back, I think, three or four months later to get another uh, sperm test and uh, realized that he had uh, effectively doubled his sperm concentration. Mm. He was someone who was looking to be a dad, now fortunately is one. And so that was, uh, uh, that, that was very, <laughs> that was a, a, quite an amazing yeah. story for him. Uh, and then, yeah, all together, we've had uh, countless people uh, emailing us saying that they feel much safer and that uh, they're happy to be able to use technology without having this, uh, this little voice in their head telling them, hey, you shouldn't really be putting your cell phone in your pocket. Hey, it still is in your pocket. Hey, you know, it's not good. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so, yeah, we're, we're glad to be able to provide this uh, effortless protection to tens of thousands of people now. Mm-hmm. And is there anything you're obsessed with right now, be it a book, a website, an app, a documentary, anything that you want to share with the listeners? Yeah, I mean, so I've spent a lot of time recently on, but that's also because I'm nodding out on EMF content, <laughs> on ehtrust.com, uh, mm-hmm. environmentalhealthtrust.com, which uh, gathers quite a, quite a lot of resources in regards to to what's been going on. The documentary, I'll email you the name okay. uh, if you want to put it in the show notes. Sure. Uh, but there's been a documentary that I've watched a couple of times as well that was very enlightening. And aside from this, I'm reading Transcend right now, which is seven steps or nine steps to living a better, longer life, which I think is very on par with uh, the mission of our company here. Amazing book by uh, one of the co-authors, the chief innovation officer at Google very brilliant person and very insightful on where we're at right now in terms of medicine abilities and what the future holds for us. So it's called it's called Nine Steps to Better Longer Life. Uh, I'm butchering the title. Transcend um, is definitely Transcend. the best way okay. the best way to get it. Transcend Nine Steps to Living Well Forever. Uh, okay. So it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it, the title is doesn't uh, hides the fact that the good is very good. Mm-hmm. But, so I would highly recommend reading it. So for the listeners, you're offering $20 off an order. So a $100 minimum order. They just use the code get pregnant. Um, anything you wanted to share about the anything with the order there? Uh, it's yeah. one of your most pop, the popular things that people usually get. So if it's about getting pregnant, I would highly recommend the underwear, obviously. Right. One of our most popular items at the moment is also the BD uh, yeah. for brain protection. Um, shirt uh, has had a lot of good, very good feedback. Uh, it actually just uh, got officially launched. I mean, actually, it's getting launched officially this week. It was pre- in pre-orders for a little while, but all of our beta testers just loved it. Um, I'll add that we have free returns and free shipping above a hundred dollars so you can shop uh confidently we're uh super easy going when it comes to this if the products are not right for you we don't want to take your money (laughs) (laughs) and we're also uh, one of the first la companies that uh, reacted to the covid19 mayors appealed for people to start making masks so if you're struggling to find some we have a couple of products that can help with covid19 mask and 
a snapback glove, so in some innovative glove that hangs by your belt for whenever you need to open doors or grab products or whatever. Yeah, that uh, so, I saw that. yeah we're very excited to uh, be able to make a difference in our communities uh, in in those times of needs. Uh, and uh, the the last exciting piece about our fabric is that um, it contains a very high percentage of silver, which has natural antiviral properties. So no idea what it's doing on COVID nineteen. Obviously, we haven't had a chance to test it specifically on this, but it should help us prevent the spreading germs and viruses in general and probably COVID-19 as well. All right. So they go to lambs, L-A-M-B-S dot com. Uh, get lambs, oh, G-E-T-L-A-M-B-S dot com. Okay. So we'll have that in the show notes. And just w- one more question here. So if someone's reluctant to um, to do this, is there anything that you would, you know, now that you know all this information, like what would you say to someone who's listening and they're like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to, you know, I want to, you know, look at protecting myself from this. I don't know. What's something that you would, would share with someone? Yeah, I would need to know exactly why someone would be reluctant. But um, if it's about like switching over to a new type of product like this, um, we've worked very, very hard on the fit and the design, as I was saying. And so today, wearing lens is actually just like wearing any other piece of underwear, except that it's also antibacterial and will uh, spread heat in, in a more effective way. So Effectively, even if you don't want to protect yourself from EMFs for from one reason or another, uh, these are still better garments than most likely what you have currently in uh, in your drawers. So, and they come with a completely thirty days um, happiness guarantee. Uh, there is absolutely no risk in trying it out, <laughs> and, and if you don't like them, we'll take them back happily. So, yeah. And otherwise, um, I would highly recommend to reading a little bit more into the dangers associated with the. Uh, the Guardian article is a great place to get started. Uh, ehtrust.com, uh, org is uh, another great resource because it's something that has not been talked about, about, but that can have that could have a very big impact on your health uh, in the long term. And that was ehtrust.com. Yes, correct. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's like knowledge is power. Once you know this stuff, you can't really look back. You've gone down the rabbit hole, and so now kind of time to time, yeah, time to make a change. Yeah, definitely appreciate you coming on, sharing your words of wisdom on this topic, and uh, definitely check out getlambs.com. And the coupon code is get pregnant for twenty dollars off an order of more than a hundred dollars. So thanks again. Thanks so much for having me, Sarah. Melatonin is important for female fertility. It helps regulate hormones and maintain the body's circadian rhythms. Plus, it helps determine the frequency and duration of the menstrual cycle. Plus, it impacts sperm count and motility. Blue and green light negatively impact our melatonin production. That's why we recommend Blue Blocks Blue and Green Light Sleep Glasses to all our one-to-one clients. Simply go to blueblocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com and use the coupon code Get pregnant podcast at checkout to receive your 15% discount. That's blueblocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com and use the coupon code get pregnant podcast. Hey there, I regularly speak with five to 10 couples per week who are struggling to have their baby. And although we want to help everyone, we only have two spots available per month to work with us. So the supercharger fertility discovery call is for action takers really people who are ready to move forward so they can finally have their baby. And if you're not ready and you wait, the risk is you'll need to wait two to three months for a spot to open up. So if you're seriously considering working with us, go to fabfertile, F-A-B, fertile.com and click on book a free call. Then you'll be all booked in and ready to spend 30 minutes to give you the action plan to getting pregnant naturally. That's fabfertile, F-A-B, fertile.com and click on book a free call. I'm excited to offer you a special gift. If you are a U.S. resident, text FERTILE, F-E-R-T-I-L-E to 55444. You'll be prompted to enter your email address and you'll receive our fertility yoga download. In this 20 minute intro video, we focus on a calming and peaceful practice to connect back to our heart. These simple yoga poses can help quiet negative thoughts and make you feel more in control. Download it now and get started today. For U.S. residents, text FERTILE, F-E-R-T-I-L-E to 55444. For non-U.S. residents, go to Yoga Freebie, F-R-E-E-B-I-E, to access your special gift. That's yogafreebie.com to access the free fertility yoga download.
The Get Pregnant Naturally podcast, including show notes and links, provides information with respect to healthy living, nutrition, lab testing, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Get Pregnant Naturally podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without representation or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified health care provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.